Well, hello. I'm, uh, I'm just, just a minute, I'll be right with you. I just want to finish reading my horoscope. You don't mind, do you? Let's see, it says today, your personality is unique in that at times you are outgoing, friendly, sociable, while at other times you show signs of being reserved, standoffish, almost introverted. You have an independent streak and are skeptical of others who are unthinking and dogmatic in their approach. You are open to suggestion, but usually you like to do things your way. You believe it is unwise to be too frank in dealing with others. You prefer a certain amount of change and variety and become frustrated when hemmed in by restriction and excess of limitations. My, that does sound like me, doesn't it? Mm. You have a good personality as a whole, but you need to compensate for the few areas where you are somewhat weak. You have a number of abilities you are not fully using, and this failure to employ your capabilities is sometimes a source of frustration. You possess a strong need to be accepted and you thrive on praise and the expressed approval of your friends well if that doesn't sound like me I don't know what is this is my horoscope for today I have to read it every morning you know to find out what's going on in my life is that you do you pick up your newspaper in the morning or at night and you say I wonder what my horoscope says I wonder how many people today read their horoscope as a daily thing. In other words, it's something that they participate in religiously. You don't do that, do you? No, I, I didn't think you did. Well, we're just going to talk then to those who do this to find out why they do it and to find out that if it is a good thing to do. Have you ever walked into a bookstore <clears throat> or glanced over the book racks in the drug stores or supermarkets and noticed how many books deal in the form of many different forms of guidance, how to know your future, how to improve your power of thinking, how to seek the stars for guidance, how to open your mind to supernatural wisdom of the universe, books on dream interpretations, horoscopes, ESP, mind reading, how to conduct seances, even books on how to make witches bruise and how to make yourself irresistible or to put a hex on your enemy. Now I know that many millions of readers today read their daily horoscope in the newspapers. And in fact, they say in a lot of cases, well, it's just for fun. You know, I don't really believe in it, but it's just for fun. But let me tell you, that there are many people also who read their horoscopes and go to fortune tellers and get their fortunes told seriously, I say seriously, before deciding on a job, to buy a new car, when to set their wedding date. And I believe that there are many people today who are desiring to know the future. Horoscopes, what does this involve? You know, Something that amazes me today is the way that horoscopes have taken their trend. Do you know that in 1960, out of a leading magazine, well, let me put it this way. First of all, first of all, let's establish this right off the bat. When people say to me, Mary, what sign were you born under? First of all, what month of the year, what sign were you born under? Leo, Cancer, Virgo, whatever. Do you know what I say to them? I say, I was born under the sign of the cross. Wow, well, yes. You see, I don't believe in horoscopes. Now you know where I stand, don't you? And I'm going to tell you why I don't believe in them. But let's just go back for a minute. 1960, my horoscope read this. This is an extremely important year. You are far more in tune with what you actually want and the means by which you can get the goodwill of relatives and neighbors and all close business and personal companions by thinking more in terms of their basic goals, etc. Okay? 1960. That was my horoscope. Now, let's see what my horoscope was in 1974. Oh, the horoscope changes really in a very marked way, the type of readings that one gets. 
Venus smiles on romance and snuggling tonight. Put your place in erotic order with candlelight, champagne in the fridge, soft music on the stereo, sachet hidden between the sheets. An up day, ego soars. Body radiates health and energy. Have a ball. Lunar aspects act as magnets, encouraging outrageous flirting and sexual turn-ons throughout the day. Neptune and Pluto provide a drunken atmosphere, though no liquor has been consumed. Listen to loud music to exercise mischievous mental demons. You know, after reading that, I'm a little bit concerned from the same magazine of reading what my horoscope is today. We've been talking back regarding the different things regarding um, spiritual uh, possession, spirit control, um, the discussion of discerning of spirits. And you say, well, Mary, what has horoscopes got to do with evil spirits? Well, when I read this type of a horoscope, and I realize that many people today read these kind of things, and they actually believe in them. Now, we're not in dark Africa somewhere. We're in Canada, the United States. We're in what we call civilized countries. Why do people read horoscopes? What would cause them to so do? I believe that the scriptures teach a lot about this. First of all, um, the horoscope is people looking at astrology. They're looking to the stars to guide them. Let me just show you something here. This is the, what they call the zodiac, the signs of the zodiac, okay? It is 12 months of the year, and each month, of course, is supposed to represent uh, a person's sign under which they were born. Now, this is supposed to mean something to them. They believe that being born under a certain sign means that uh, certain things will take place at certain times, and only those people who can read the stars and know what the stars mean and being born under these signs, they can foretell and tell you what's going on because of what these stars are doing. They call it astrology. This is not astronomy, it's astrology. Astron true science of the stars. Astrology, believe it or not, is the worship of the stars. And the scriptures teach about this and teach against it. Now, there are many people bowing down to this sort of thing. They believe in it. They really, honestly and truly believe that there is a, an ability for these stars and the place where they are in the heavens to be able to tell you what is going to happen in your life. I want to take a look and see what the scriptures say regarding things like this. <clears throat> And I believe that with the sick world, the economy, the way things are in the world today, overpopulation, rapidly dwindling food supplies, the threat of nuclear war, crime at an all-time high, and men are desperate to learn the future, I believe that this is probably one of the reasons that people turn to the reading of horoscopes and the reading of the stars because they're wanting to know what's going to happen on the face of the earth. They're afraid. And so they believe then that they will be able to know and have comfort in these things. And when they read nice little uh, horoscopes saying that everything's going to be okay today, they feel comforted by this. Of course, I have to ask myself where the Christians are today and what is happening in the world that the people of God are not turning to the Lord to find the answers and the peace of mind that they need. The... Unbelievably, of course, the so-called information is readily available in the media, supposedly dedicated to telling only the truth, which is today's newspaper. And when people take their newspapers and actually religiously read their newspapers every day to read their horoscope, they literally believe that that horoscope is going to give them something to tell them about what's going to happen that day. Where do they originate? I would say that about... Uh, 600 B.C., the Chaldeans, who were proficient in the science of economy, and the motivating force behind their keen interest in astronomy was religion, believe it or not. Um, people are religious. 
there is something inside of people that need to worship because we're made spiritual beings. And back in the scriptures, um, let's just take our Bibles here at this point, and I want to just read here from Deuteronomy chapter 4, and also verse 15 and verse 19. And um, it says, Take ye therefore good heed unto yourselves, for you saw no manner of similitude on the day that the Lord spoke unto you in Horeb out of the midst of the fire. Lest you corrupt yourselves and make you a graven image, the similitude of any figure, the likeness of male or female. And go down to verse 19. And lest thou lift up thine eyes unto the heaven, and when thou seest the sun and the moon and the stars, even all the host of heaven should be driven to worship them and serve them, which the Lord thy God hath divided unto all nations under the whole heaven. You see, when people believe that the stars can tell them their life story, can tell them what's going to happen in the future, that's what they believe. They lift up their eyes to the stars and they say, listen, I believe that you are going to tell me what is going to take place. Now, one of you is right now is thinking, well, didn't God make the stars? And so if God made the stars, why can't he tell me by way of the stars? This does not seem to be the way that God moves. We know that God made the stars. He created the universe. <clears throat> but God speaks to us by way of his spirit. And when we are led by his spirit and we move and we worship God, that is one thing. But when we worship the stars, that is quite another. The zodiac and these signs are really... Um, an imaginary belt in the heavens that extend uh, for eight degrees on either side of the apparent path of the sun. It also includes the paths of the moon and the principal planets. The belt is divided into 12 equal parts which are named for a different constellation and comprise the signs of the zodiac. Now, many people, of course, um, believe in these signs and believe that as they they receive information by way of these people who can tell futures and can tell, read horoscopes and give you this information. They believe now that they've got this kind of knowledge. And uh, the Chaldeans, of course, back in the olden times, considered the planets to be gods. They mapped out the heavens, they collected uh, astronomical data, and they believed they could trace the movements of these celestial bodies. This type of thing is as old as the Old Testament itself. And we also find then that, incredible as it may seem, millions of Americans base important life decisions on what their horoscopes read for the day. I have uh, been reading some articles, and I'm just sharing some different things with you here, some very up-to-date information. Uh, some of these articles appearing in Time, National Observer, New York Times, Sunday Magazine, and so on, and naming others too. These journalists um, <clears throat> estimate that there are at least 10,000 astrologers in the United States. Now that is several years ago. I don't have the exact up-to-date figure. I've been trying to find out just how many it is. But you can imagine, 10,000 astrologers. And um, out of 1,200 daily newspapers in America publishing horoscope columns, compared with only 100 20 years ago. I believe that the nation has become obsessed with astrology. Now, <clears throat> they, they also say this, that a stable society, and in a stable society where um, concrete religious values provide necessary answers to the great questions of life, life regarding, let's say, death, man's fate, and so on, that when stability is upset, persons experience a sense of loss. And in peculiar state of this peculiar state of receptivity, they turn desperately about looking for new answers. Now, we know the state of the world today. We know that it is in a state of chaos. And many people today are desiring to know truth. So uh, we feel here that in the Western world, of course, that it seems to be OK. It seems to be the in thing, people who are in the know people who are in the movies, all of the people in high limelight, let's say, look to the stars and everybody goes around wearing their little um, sign of the zodiac. People go and buy them in the stores continually. 
not only as little charms, but they wear them on their body in the form of necklaces and so on. Now, we uh, are going to be talking about uh, Africa and the way that people carry charms on themselves as a something, as a symbol that, uh, you know, their God is real and that they're worshiping their gods and, and that they have got uh, control over society and over, the, over life itself. And people today are wearing these types of charms and uh, they are literally believing that as long as they wear these charms, this is going to be a safeguard for them. Most people who call themselves Christians have only given what we call a mental assent to the stories in the Bible. And, uh, and I think this, that particularly where Christians are concerned, if they are delving into the um, signs of the zodiac and into horoscopes to try to find their faith and to try to find peace of mind, that they have never really had an in-depth meeting with the Lord. If they did, I believe that they would no longer have these types of practices. Now, you say, well, doesn't, don't Christians want to know what's going to happen in the future? I believe that man has always desired to have some type of superhuman guidance, and this in itself is not wrong, because God has provided for the instruction of his people. But what about those who attempt to read their destiny in the stars? Now, I want to also see a couple of other verses of Scripture, and we're going to turn to eight, Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses uh, 9 to 12. And uh, this is where it says here that, uh, When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abomination of those nations. There shall not be found among you any one that makes his son or daughter to pass through the fire, or that uses divination, or an observer of the times, which is fortune-telling and astrology, and also an enchanter goes into this type of thing too. And it goes on to talk about the charmers, the consulter with familiar spirits. All of these that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out before thee. Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. He, he notes, note please, that these things are something that God was not pleased with in the Old Testament. And neither is it a good thing today because these are still things that people bow down to to worship. We want to look at 2 Kings chapter 7, verses 15 to 17. And I'm going to read from the Living. Bible here. They rejected the laws and the covenant which he had made with their ancestors and despised all their warnings. In their foolishness they worshipped heathen idols despite the Lord's stern warnings. They defied all the commandments of the Lord their God and made two calves from molten gold. They made detestable shameful idols and worshipped Baal, the sun, the moon, and the stars. They even burned their own sons and daughters on the altars of Molech. They consulted fortune tellers and used magic and sold themselves to evil. So the Lord was very angry. Now, we look at what has taken place in the, in the history of, of the nation and the world. Do you know that in um, a certain city that they had decided to set up what they called a phone, a horoscope, initiated in a large eastern city in the United States for each of the 12 signs of the zodiac there was a different telephone number and a new reading in each day at 7 p.m. Within only three weeks, the service had logged 60,000 calls a day without any benefit of any previous advertising. If this is not indicative of what is taking place in the world today, I don't know what is. And I believe that if we would, as particularly as believers, let's say pull our socks up, and begin to manifest the power of God and begin to bring the blessing of God by the way of spiritual gifts, by the way of prophecy, by the way of all of the other gifts of the Spirit and the power gifts of the Spirit and let people know that God is the God of all gods and that we don't have to worship the stars and the sun and the moon and we don't have to go and get our fortunes told, we don't have to have our horoscopes read, but rather that we can go to the Word of God and God will leave us moment by moment and day by day and that he will indeed give us the peace of heart and the peace of mind that we're looking for. Look, I'd like you just to search your own heart now. Why do you read the horoscope? I mean, really, why do you? Is it just for fun? And I find that the enemy has a way of coming in and trying to say us, oh, it's just for fun. But the more we do it, the more we want to do it. Now look, as we come into even a new year, whatever new situation you come into, let's trust God more fully for the next year, shall we?
Let's believe God that he is going to move in such a wonderful way that we will no longer have to trust in horoscopes, but trust in the Lord our God, and he will show us the way we shall go, and we shall be comforted. God bless you. Come back next time, won't you?